Good morning. We will concentrate on the outflow of money as a result of interest paid. If we look at the information provided, there are accrued expenses for 2014 for interest, and then at the end of 2015, there's a prepaid expense of 4,400. So the previous year, all the interests were not paid. In the current year, we already paid interest for 2016. Then the income statement is 68,500. So that is the total amount. If there was no accrued or no prepaid amounts, is the amount that will be recorded in the income statement. Now, if we look at the ledger account, the previous year in 2014, the total amount that was paid out for interest, according to the trial balance, was 26400 Then you determined that there was a crude expense of 7400 that, uh, that will increase the interest on loan for the current year. So interest on loan, we had to debit with 7400 to indicate that the interest is more than the amount that we paid. And we credited in accrued expense to create a liability. Because we increased the 7500 in the interest on loan account, we could record in the profit and loss account the total expense for interest for the year as 33800 so that is the amount that you were supposed to pay out. If there was no accrued expense, this is my total expense for 2014. And the total expense is recorded in your income statement. Now on the first day of the next year, we have to reverse this entry that we completed. So accrued expense will now be debited with 7400 so that we don't have a balance in the accrued expense account. And we will credit interest on loan to show that we still owe money for the previous year. So what did we learn out of this? If there's an accrued expense at the end of 2014, accrued expense is a liability. A liability has a credit balance. So if we do the reverse entry on the first day of the next year, we will debit the accrued expense and we will credit the interest on loan. So I don't have to go back to the previous year every time. If I know accrued expense is a liability, I know it's a credit entry. So if I do the reverse entry, it will be on the credit side of my interest on loan account. At the end of 2015, we see that there's a prepaid expense of 4,400. Now, in 2015, they don't tell us how much money did we pay, and we have to uh, calculate that by balancing. So first of all, I'm going to say included in the amount that we paid on the debit side, so included in that bank amount, is prepaid expense that's not for the current year. So I will therefore have to remove the prepaid expense from my interest on loan account and show that interest on loan is credited with 4400 to reduce the expense for the current year and prepaid expenses account uh, asset is created for 4400 then we look at the profit and loss figure now remember the figure that's in your profit and loss is the amount that it should be if there was no prepaid and no accrued amounts so in my income statement or profit and loss I've got a figure of 68,500. So I debited profit and loss and I credited interest on loan with 68,500. Now because I've done all these entries, I am able to determine what was the amount of outflow of money as a result of interest paid, 80,300. 
at the beginning of the next financial year, we will have to do a reverse entry again to show that the prepaid expense that we created at the end of the year must now be reversed. So I will take it out of my prepaid expense account and I will put it into interest on loan on the debit side. So that prepaid expense indicates to us that for 2016, we already paid 4,400. If we go back to 2015, this 80,300 that we paid included the accrued expense of 2014. So the first money that we paid was to pay for the accrued expense. Then we paid money for our current year, and then we also paid money for the next year, 4,400. So included in that 80,300 80, is the interest for the current year, the accrued expense for the previous year, and the prepaid expense for the following year. If we look at the cash flow statement, the amount that we will record as outflow of money will be the 80300 So that is not the figure that we have on our income statement because on the income statement we show what is the expense for the current year. On the cash flow statement we show the outflow of money that was paid for interest. So included in this 80300 is the accrued expense of the previous year that caused the outflow in the current year. It is the expense for the current year that caused the outflow and it also includes the prepaid expense for the following year so that means it's also included in that 80,300. So the main thing is to remember that in the cash flow statement you don't look what is the figure in the income statement, what is your actual expense for the year. You want to see what was the outflow of money as a result of interest. What did we learn today? Accrued expense is a liability or prepaid expense is an asset and both of them must be reversed at the beginning of the next financial year. Accrued expense at the end of the previous year uh, was a balance on the credit side. Therefore, you will debit accrued expense to close off the account and you will credit your interest expense account. Prepaid expense at the end of the previous year was an asset. So it had a debit balance. So you had to credit the interest expense account um, at the to close off the prepaid expense account and you would go and debit interest expense for the current year. At the end of the financial year, you have to record accrued expense and prepaid expense. So you will do it at the beginning of the year when you reverse entries and at the end of the year when you do an adjustment to do the entries for the current year. At the end of the year, the accrued expense is... Um, liability and therefore accrued expense will be credited. Interest expense must be increased because we didn't pay all the interest so interest expense will be debited. Prepaid expense at the end of the year is an asset therefore we will debit prepaid expenses. Interest is an expense. We already included a figure there that's not for the current year so we have to remove it from the interest account, so the interest expense account will be credited.